In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit led Jesus out into the wilderness in order to be tempted. And Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness being tempted. That calls to mind the 40 years that the people of Israel spent in the wilderness as they were passing from their slavery in Egypt into their entrance in the promised land. But this whole account of Jesus being tempted and of God's people in the Old Testament being tempted ends up being a bit unsettling for you today. If Jesus, perfect God in the flesh, was tempted by the devil himself, then it stands to reason that you might be tempted too. Jesus didn't fall into that temptation, but the people in the wilderness did, and honestly, so have you. The reality of temptation makes you feel vulnerable. Temptation, after all, is serious business. Now, you don't always talk about it that seriously. Thinking about the temptation of a piece of chocolate cake or purchasing something that you might not have intended to buy as being tempted is usually how we talk about temptation. But the temptation that you face, it is clear, is more than chocolate cake and unintended purchases. When you're tempted, it pulls you away from God's plan and the goodness of God's expectation. And if you fall into sin, there you experience separation from God. And that, that is serious indeed. So when the serious business of temptation comes up in your life, what do you do and how do you handle it? It might be tempting to try to use willpower and self-control to get yourself out of temptation. You might think to yourself, if I just try hard enough or use enough skills and life hacks, you might be able to work against temptation and have some success. But that hasn't worked for you in the past, has it? I mean, maybe once or twice you were able to overcome temptation, but Perfectly? Always? No. No, you've fallen into temptation and into sin. Those times that you've been tempted by anger or laziness or hatred or self-indulgence, they're all real. Scripture talks about how the devil prowls around you like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, even you. The world and even your own sinful nature joins in on the temptation and you find yourself in a difficult situation. So when you're tempted and when you fall into temptation, where do you go? If your willpower and your self-control won't keep you from falling into sin, it becomes easy to wonder if there is any hope left for you at all. Paul's words in Romans 8 are comforting. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Notice, Paul doesn't say that the one who is perfect in resisting temptation or the one who overcomes the devil will be saved. If that were the truth, you would already be condemned. The hope that you have is found by believing in Jesus, the one who was tempted and overcame the temptation, the one who was crucified for your sin, and the one who is risen from the dead. Do you believe that your Lord has overcome temptation and sin for you? If you believe that, and when you flee to Jesus, your Savior, you are saved. Jesus is the word of God that overcomes and defeats temptation. And Jesus is the word of faith that is near you, in your heart and in your mouth. In the time of temptation, 
instead of trying to resist the temptation yourself, instead of trying to fight back against it and to show temptation that you mean business and you can be the boss of temptation, take your temptation to the Savior who did what you cannot do in the time of temptation. He answered the devil's temptation with perfection and with the clear words of Scripture. You live on Jesus, who is the bread of life. You worship him alone. You do not put the Lord your God to the test. Instead, you receive the promise of Jesus for you. Psalm 91 that we prayed earlier gives an illustration of God's promises for you and God's protection for you. The picture of a bird who stretches out her wings over her chicks using her feathers and her pinions. That's the long flying feathers on the back of the wing. Protect you. Jesus, your Savior, stretches out his arms on the cross and uses those gracious arms as your defense and as your safe place. It's as if he says to you, come, Take shelter under my cross. It is here that your sins are forgiven, and it is here that you are protected in the day of temptation. The devil and the world and your own sinful nature can't get you here in my protection. My innocent death is for you, and my blood has been shed for you. I am your fortress and your citadel. I have endured temptation and have broken the power of the devil for you. As you believe in those promises of Jesus, he is the safe word that is near to you. He is the one that preserves you. He is also the one who teaches you to pray. Lead us not into temptation. If you were alone, you would be vulnerable in that day of temptation. But hear this and hear it well. You are not alone. The Lord your God walks with you, near to you. And as you cling to him in faith, you rejoice that he has delivered you. When the devil comes, tempting you to think that you aren't safe or that you might be in trouble, joyfully respond. It is written that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And Mr. Devil, I believe that I am saved and I believe in my Lord Jesus. The devil has no power over you and your weaknesses and vulnerabilities have been overcome by the grace of Jesus himself, your protecting and your forgiving Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.